Hello, and welcome to Rackin Lab 1050. This is to create an alert when content is updated. The objective is to be alerted when content is updated in a digital rebar endpoint. That's a critical piece of information. It can tell you about security, content availability, or other changes to the system. And from a business ROI, that means that operators are able to track and verify environments that have uh, been updated and make sure that they are only updated in ways that they expected and planned. It's about a 10 minute lab. And we're going to go into triggers, alerts, content packs. As part of working in this lab, we're going to be using a system that we've used in the previous 10, 30, 10, 40 systems. So I already have some material populated. None of that is particularly important for this system, um, but you can see that we've already completed the bootstrapping wizard. These are not prerequisites for this lab. You can do this in a uh, system with no actual infrastructure running or set up. So our first uh, component is we want to start in step one from this info and preferences page where we scroll down to the bottom here and see our API objects. The reason why I want to show you this list is that these objects all can generate alerts when they are changed or updated. Now we can generate events on a lot of different things including, including ad hoc events, but the ones that are in this list will be prime sources for events. Next, we want to go into our machines list and make sure that we have a self-runner. You can tell that it's a self-runner because the name of this machine is the same as the digital rebar endpoint ID. In addition, if we look down in the system itself, we can see that there's a parameter that says machine self-runner true, and we can use that as a filter criteria to make sure that we're dealing with the self-runner. And we're, this is important because there are many triggers that we will want to run as diagnostics that use the self-runner to actually run those triggers and blueprints. The other thing we want to do is go ahead and open the live event panel. This is going to generate events as we go through, move, and change things. So for example, if I was to go in and remove this uh, discovered system, I can go ahead, I have to unlock it, and then delete it. Looks great. And you'll see that we're getting updates we updated to remove the lock flag and then we've deleted the system. Perfectly normal and that those events are part of what we can build triggers for. In order for this trigger to work, we want to create some content change uh, events. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to our pull in the dev library content pack. We're going to pull it in at uh, the last release version. That looks great. And now it's been installed and you'll notice that there's an event contents dev library created. Uh, for the next time we do this, I'm going to go ahead and include the tip versions of these content packs so that we'll be able to choose different versions uh, and make changes to it. We're going to go back to our triggers view and we're going to create a new trigger. We're going to call this one lab 1050 and pick an event trigger provider. The blueprint we want is the alerts on content change, very straightforward. And then we are gonna target that to the local self runner. So here you'll notice it's doing the params machine self runner equals true, and point equals blank. That is what targets the self runner. And we can always check our uh, filter here and see that that's gonna pull in that one machine, nothing else in the system. Excellent. And then for the trigger match, we want to go ahead and say take the contents and we want all operations on all content packs. Now I can filter this down to the dev library and make it even more restrictive. So this will tell me only when that one content pack is changed, not any of the other ones. Go ahead and create a unique uh, icon and save this trigger. Now one thing we do need is we want to merge the data. This will actually take the data from that event and pass it into the blueprint so that we can pull information out like what event it was and what fired. So including merge data is important. This blueprint is actually structured to warn you if it doesn't get the data it's expected and it will fail on the back end. So now that we've built our trigger and let's go ahead and look at the UX uh, graphical view for this. See, we have some cron triggers and we have some event triggers over here. 
So you'll see here is our lab 1050, here is our match, here is the page that's going to run, and you'll see this actually tells us that we're going to raise an info alert when content changes. Now let's go back over to our content, our catalog, and take our dev library. And this time we're going to go ahead and we're going to upgrade it to a new version. That looks great. Very quick process. From here, we want to go into the alerts section and seeing that an alert was actually generated. If we come up here, we'll see here is our, our event content pack dev library. If we drill into it, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of information about what content pack was done and we can actually scan through and see that we have a parameter content alert, the job, and things like that. We can click here and actually pull through in the content library and take advantage of this highlighting. If I had gone through and picked a different content pack, say the CoreOS library, and installed that, since this doesn't match the specific content pack, no alert will be created. We are right now only filtering on the dev library content alert. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this alert and the other alert that's in the system and then return to the triggers page. From the triggers page, we're going to go back into our alert and we want to modify it to have a higher alert level. To do that, we're going to go in, into the work order config and add a parameter for alert level. This allows us to then set a higher warning or error level for those alerts. In this case, we're going to go ahead and say error so that we can raise an error alert. If I jump back to my contents page, sorry, contents page, catalog, take my dev library, change it to another alert. Now in our alerts section, you'll see that this was raised as an error. Simple as that. Now we are going from saying these are info systems to error systems. And that change is immediately impacted by passing the additional data into the system. That concludes all the UX components for this lab. We have some other labs in the 2000 level that show you how to go from alerts to um, events and then those events into, say, Slack messages or things like that. That's lab 2020. I highly recommend you take a look at that lab as a next instructional lab. One thing I do want to show you is how to do this same operation with the CLI. So we're going to go in and remove this lab uh, trigger. Go ahead and just delete this out. Excellent. And we're going to take the same operation, but do it from the CLI. Let's refresh. Come back in here, and we can create this trigger through the CLI. Simple enough. You'll see here is the lab created. Different icon, of course, because I didn't define that in my thing. And now I have a my lab set up, this time I did a content star um, for the system. And if I went back into the CLI and said DRP CLI catalog item install, let's see, dev library version equals tip, then this would then fire that newly created alert. And you'll notice we already have an unresolved alert, content pack dev library. And because I didn't put in the elevated system, it just put it in as an info error. So I was able to do these same operations that I showed you in the UX from the lab completely in the CLI. Of course, everything we do in Digital Rebar is API and CLI first, so that's pretty normal. It's always nice to see how you can execute the steps in these labs through the CLI also. I hope this is valuable, and I do suggest you check out some of our 2000 level labs where we do more things with alerts, including hooking them into other events and notification systems. Thank you.